welcome back, my friends. We're here today to talk dynamics one more time, and we're here to talk about work today. A little introduction to work when you're talking about dynamics problems, okay? What is work, okay? There are two kinds of work that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about kinetic energy, and we're going to talk about potential energy. So kinetic energy is when I apply a force to a body over some distance, a force times some distance. <clears throat> and then there's potential energy. And potential energy comes with a change in altitude, either a, 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 a change in elevation, a positive change, right? If I go up some stairs, I have potential energy, right? That I have stored that energy. It took me some energy to climb the stairs to get up there, but now I have that stored potential energy. When I come back downstairs, I'm going to lose that potential energy. So a change in height. If you remember the equation for that is MGH. Uh, and so it's, it's weight times that height. So those are the two kinds of work that we're going to be talking about. Okay, but work can be summed up as a force over some kind of distance, okay? So what kind of units is that gonna be? Force would be something like Newtons or pounds, right? In the uh, in a, in a US customary units. Distance, meters, or feet. So units for work would be Newton meters, which is a joule, right? Or pound feet or foot pounds of, of work, okay? So let's see what this problem here is asking us for. A crate slides down a 35 degree incline. The mass of the crate is 50 kilograms, and mu sub k, the kinetic coefficient of friction, is 0.35. It slides a total of 2.3 meters. Okay, so let's say that it started maybe up here, okay, and it slid to down here somewhere, okay, to there. And this is 2.3 meters, okay? So that's how the distance that it's traveling down that incline. And it wants us to find the work done on the crate by all the forces, okay? So let's see if we can do this. How are we gonna do this? Of course we're gonna use this equation here, but what else can we use? We can use this equation here. Maybe you've, maybe you've seen it before, okay? Some of the force equals mass times acceleration. That's old Newton's second law, isn't it? And every time we see this, we think to ourselves, hey, I need to draw me a force body diagram, and on this side, I need to draw me a kinetic diagram. Let's do that, okay? So here is my force. Is that a good rectangle? <laughs> and then over here is going to be, so this is my, force body diagram or free body diagram. This is my KD, my kinetic diagram, okay? So kinetic diagram, kinetic, remember, motion. How's this thing moving? Down the hill. So here's what I've got. MA, okay? Um, for force, what do I have? What do I have for the forces acting on this body? Okay, number one, I've got some weight, don't I? Or instead of W, can we just call it, oh, I've smeared it everywhere. Okay, here we go. MG, how about that? Okay, there's weight. What else do I have? Um, I've got a normal force, box push on plane, plane push on box. Okay, so there's N. And then it's sliding down the plane, so of course I have a, a friction force opposing that motion, pushing up the plane. Now that's all the forces that are acting on this system, okay? So I think the thing to do here, right, is to is to have a tilted coordinate system. What do you think? So let's have a coordinate system that's like this, okay? There's I hat and uh, there's my new J hat, okay? So I'm thinking about a coordinate system that's tilted to align with this plane over here. So what I'm going to do on that guy is this. I'm going to take this one thing that's not aligned with that plane, right? We know this. And I'm going to break that guy into components. Let me get a color pen. Okay, so this guy has two things going on here. He's got a component here and a component there. And let's make sure we get this angle correct, okay? 
they gave us in the problem that this angle here is 35 degrees. So that means this is 35 degrees, which means that that is what? 55 degrees? And that means that this over here must also be 35 degrees. Okay? Which means that this component here is mg cos 35, and that this, uh, this one here is mg sine 35. Okay, so there's my free body diagram all broken into components. I've got my kinetic diagram over there. So let's let's do a little um, let's do a little Newton's second law. But again, this is a this is a uh, vector equation. Let's break it down into two scalar equations. And so let's do the uh, let's do the j hat direction first. Okay, j hat. So that's the that's the sum of the y's, and that's really the, what kind of y is that? That's the tilted y, isn't it, right? This is a, a tilted y system. So what do I have on, the, on this side of the equation, on the force side of the equation, in the y direction? I have n, okay, n, and then going downhill, I've got this guy right here, minus mg uh, cos 35. And then on this side, on my kinetic diagram, how is the box moving in the y direction? That would be in this direction here. It's not, right? It's not moving at all in that direction. It's only moving in the j hat direction, or the i hat direction, sorry. The x direction. So in the j hat direction, it's moving zero, isn't it? So n equals mg cos 35, and m is... 50 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times the cosine of 35. What does that equal? 490.5 times the cosine of 35 equals 401.8. So N equals 401.8. And that's Newton's, okay? Now, I'm interested in calculating that friction force. Can we calculate that now? Of course we can, because we remember that friction is fun. Right? The friction force is equal to mu sub k times n, which is 401.8 times, what is n? I mean, uh, I'm sorry, mu sub k right there, 0.35. Okay, so the friction force, how much are you friction force? 401 times 0.35 equals 140.63. 140.63 newtons equals the friction force. Okay, so there's that. So let's talk about the two kinds of work we have. Remember, work is going to come from some kind of force, okay? So I can either have a potential energy work, which is a change in height, or I can have a kinetic energy work, which is some kind of force acting on it. And for this box, I'm going to put to you that there are two forces at play here on this box, only two. Number one, the weight, okay? So the work from the weight, I'll just put weight here. Okay. Now the work from the weight is causing me to have a loss in altitude. Is that loss in altitude going to be a positive work or a negative work? Are we gaining potential energy or losing potential energy as we go downhill? Of course, we're losing potential energy. So the work due to weight is going to be negative. Okay. What other? There's the work from a force, but there's no external forces pushing on the box, is there? Well, there is one. And he's right there. And he is kind of pushing on the box. He is keeping the box going for, from, from going as fast as it possibly could go, right? So the other one is the work due to friction. Okay? Now, is that going to be positive or negative? Okay? I'm going to tell you that the work, the friction work, is acting on the box. It's pushing on the box, keeping it from going as fast as it can go. So the work due to friction is going to be positive. So what are we interested in? We're interested in the work done by everything. So that's work total is going to be equal to 
the work of the weight, and that's going to be negative, plus the work done by friction. Okay, so that's the equation. This is where we're headed right here. That's where we're headed. So let's see if we can find those things. Let's start off with the work done from friction since we just found friction. Okay. Now, <clears throat> remember, we can use this equation right here. So the work done from friction is equal to the force, which is here, 140.23 newtons, okay, times some distance. And that box is going to be, friction is going to be acting over that whole entire distance as that box slides down the hill, isn't it? So 2.3 meters, the whole 2.3 meters, okay? So 140 times 2.3 equals 322. And that is Newton meters, which is joules. Okay, so there's one of the uh, works that we needed to find. Now for the work done by weight, the weight is acting straight down, and we're talking about trying to find that elevation and height change in the, let's call it the y direction here, okay? So let's say I've got this here, and I'm looking for this y distance right there. <clears throat> How far does it move to go from this plane here whoop, down to this plane here, okay? Well, I want to know that height there. I know the hypotenuse and I know the angle. Let's see, the angle, that's the opposite side and I know the hypotenuse. We need sine, don't we? So sine of 35 is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And so what is that? Uh, sine of 35 uh, equals times 2.3. 1.32 meters, so y equals 1.32 meters, okay? So the work done from the weight is equal to, and it's gonna be negative, isn't it? It's gonna be negative because it's going down here, losing altitude, okay? Uh, the force, what is the force? The force is just the weight. We don't use these components, we use the whole weight. 50 times 9.81, that's going to give me newtons, okay? Times what height? 1.32 newton meters. That's going to be joules. So work due to the weight is equal to negative 490.5 times answer equals 647. And that is joules again, okay? So there's our two works. We're only one step away from the finish line. Work total is equal to um, 322 joules minus 647 joules, which is equal to 322 minus, answer equals negative 325 joules. And that is your final answer. It all comes back to our old friend, second law there, right? F equals MA and our kinetic and force body diagrams to calculate work. Okay, I hope this helps and I'll see you on the next video.